Hello! Today I'm going to present our paper named Deep Learning Glaucoma Detection Models in Retinal Images Captured by Mobile Devices, which has the intention to show how the domain transfer technique is valuable for training deep learning models to help identify glaucoma signals in images generated by smartphones. Glaucoma is a group of optical diseases characterized by a degeneration of retinal cells resulting in changes to the optic nerve head. It is the leading cause of irreversible blindness worldwide, affecting 76 million people per year, and is predicted to affect approximately 112 million people by 2040. Usually, no signs or symptoms warn of the existence of glaucoma. It develops slowly and sometimes without noticeable loss of vision for many years until it's no longer treatable. The retina can be directly examined by using an ophthalmoscope or can be examined indirectly through retinal fundus images. The retinal fundus images allow for detection of indicators and parameters normally correlated to the appearance and development of cuppings, such as disc diameter and cup to disc ratio. Retinal images turn the process very easy to access the data, duplication, archiving, and delivery, which helps in more immediate results in medical centers where it's performed automatic or manual screening. As this project intends to compare the performance of two models in glaucoma classification, VIT and ResNet 50, first, we pre-trained the model in public high-resolution retinal images with and without PCA color augmentation. After this, the weights of the models were used to pre-train the same models in the private dataset of low-resolution retinal images collected by mobile devices, with and without PCA color augmentation. In fields of investigation, where information is collected more rapidly than analyzed and require experienced individuals to perform these investigations, Deep learning strategies show up as tools for handling and analyzing a great amount of information. A typical method of deep learning for image processing is the convolutional neural network, CNN. In this method, the learning is done using several processing layers where the system attempts to emulate the functioning of our brain's neural network. Machine learning techniques have become indispensable in many areas. With these techniques, computers are increasingly equipped with the capability to act without the need for explicit programming, building models which can train from data and make decisions based on that data. Since ophthalmology in general is strongly based on image analysis, one of the emerging research areas in recent years is the interpretation of these images using automated computational methods. In this field of visual analysis by computers for the identification of ophthalmological diseases, the use of deep learning algorithms has stood out. Some researchers have used pre-trained models with relative success for the classification of different eye diseases to detect glaucoma presence in retinal fundus images. This work has used three public datasets. They all consist of several images of fundus eye photographs with annotations from ophthalmologists and have both normal and glaucoma eye pictures. Dataset is a dataset consisting of 491 images, 356 normal, and 135 with glaucoma. This dataset was provided by an ophthalmologist to help this study, 
given that the images used in this work must contain low quality examples, and this is exactly what this dataset provides. The figure illustrates examples of low resolution retinal images captured by mobile devices. For training, testing, and validation, the percentages were the same as for the public datasets. So, for training, 260 normal and 95 glaucoma images were used. For testing, 46 normal and 20 glaucoma images. And finally, for validation, 50 normal and 20 glaucoma images, making a percentage of about 70%, 15% and 15% respectively. We also have pre-processed the images to help the convolutional neural network to be trained. First, we change the size of the images. Since the selected images did not all have the same resolution and CNN fully connected layers, that meant that all the images be in arrays of the same size, a filter have been applied to these same images. And all images have been resized to a resolution of 512 by 512 pixels. Then, we have applied principal component analysis, PCA, color augmentation to the images on the dataset. This technique changes RGB channel intensities using PCA of the pixel colors. This creates an artificial enlargement of the dataset to reduce overfitting of the image data during training. Evaluation of a classification model is done by comparing the classes predicted by the model with the true classes of each example. All classification metrics have the common goal of measuring how far the model is from perfect classification, but they do this in different ways. In this work, we used five classification models. The accuracy tells how many examples were classified correctly, regardless of class. Sensitivity evaluates the method's ability to successfully detect results classified as positive. Sensitivity, on the other hand, evaluates the ability of the method to detect negative results. Precision is a metric that evaluates the number of true positives over the sum of all positive values. And F-score is a harmonic mean calculated based on precision and revocation. Transfer learning is a machine learning method where a model developed for a task is reused as the starting point for a model on a second task. This is a popular approach in deep learning where pretend models are used as the starting point on a computer vision and natural language processing tasks giving the vast computing and time resources required to develop neural networking models on these problems. And from the huge jumps in the skill that they provide on related problems. The basic step for the pre-trained model, which was the model used in this study, are we have created a source model training the model from public datasets with high resolution fundus photographs. Then, we have used this pre-trained model as the starting point to train our model with the low-res images from the private dataset. We have compared two convolutional neural network techniques, ResNet50 and VIT, to assess the problem presented here. ResNet50 is a convolutional neural network that is 50 layers deep. ResNet, short for residual network, and is a classic neural network used as a backbone for many computer vision tasks. The fundamental breakthrough with ResNet was it allowed us to train extremely deep neural networks with 150 plus layers. Convolution neural networks have a major disadvantage during backpropagation the value of the gradient decreases significantly. Thus, 
handle any change comes to wait. To overcome this, ResNet is used. The residual blocks idea was created to address the issue of the vanishing exploding gradient. We apply a method known as a skip connection in this network. The skip connection bypasses some levels in between link layer activations to subsequent layers. This creates a leftover block. These leftover blocks are stacked to create the ResNets. The strategy behind this network is to let the network fit the residual mapping rather than have layers learning the underlying mapping. Vision Transformer, VIT, is a relatively new concept in deep learning being published in late 2020. It is a vision model based as closely as possible on the transformer architecture originally designed for test-based tasks. While the transformer architecture has become the de facto standard for natural language processing tasks, its applications to computer vision remain limited. In vision, attention is either applied in conjunction with convolutional networks or used to replace certain components of convolutional networks while keeping their overall structure in place. The researchers show that this reliance on CNNs is not necessary and a pure transformer applied directly to sequences of image patches can perform very well on image classification tasks when pre-trained on large amounts of data and transferred to multiple mid-sized or small image recognition benchmarks. VIT represents an input image as a sequence of image patches, similar to the sequence of word embeddings used when applying to transformers to text, and directly predicts class labels for the image. VIT demonstrates excellent performance when trained on sufficient data, outperforming a comparable state-of-the-art CNN, while requiring substantially fewer computational resources. Machine learning models are demonstrating impressive accuracy on various tasks and have gained widespread adoption. However, many of these models are not easily understood by the people that interact with them. This understanding, referred to as explainability or interpretability, allows users to gain insight into the machine's decision-making process. Understanding how things work is essential to how we navigate the world around us and is essential to fostering trust and confidence in AI systems. So, explainable artificial intelligence is a set of processes and methods that allows human users to comprehend and trust the results and output created by machine learning algorithms. Explainable AI is used to describe an AI model with expected impact and potential biases. It helps characterize model accuracy, fairness, transparency, and outcomes in AI-powered decision-making. Explainable AI is crucial for an organization in building trust and confidence when putting AI models into production. AI explainability also helps an organization adopt a responsible approach to AI development. Deep learning models can help to increase the speed of mass glaucoma screening and maintain the performance in between exams and examiners. The model's results in the high-resolution dataset are described in the table. Using deep learning algorithms for glaucoma detection in high-resolution images demonstrates high performance with high AUCs. The standard CNN model, ResNet50, reached the highest performance amongst the models selected. The use of PCA preprocessing increased considerably the ResNet50 performance. As a result, this preprocessing technique enhances the feature visualization related to glaucoma presence. Regarding two VIT models, the results did not reach the same standards as the ResNet50. Despite the high values of specificity and precision, the sensitivity was low.
In this case, instead of enhancing the effectiveness of the VIT, the preprocessing using the PCA method downgraded the results. After training and testing in high-resolution datasets, the weights of these models were used to initialize the training with low-resolution retinal images collected from mobile devices. The purpose is to use transfer learning techniques from a close and similar domain problem instead of using generic datasets. The results of the models in the images from mobile devices are presented in the table. In this case, the PCA technique proved to be a good method for improving feature visualization in low-resolution retinal images. Both the VIT and ResNet 50 with PCA preprocessing reached high AUCs. The VIT model in this dataset was the one reaching better results due to the fact of pairwise pixel relations processing of the self-attention mechanism which can detect more important features in low-resolution images. However, the ResNet 50 showed consistency either in the high-resolution and low-resolution images with or without PCA preprocessing. After testing the models, explainability methods were implemented to highlight important features related to the model decision. Here we have some examples of ResNet 50 predictions with grad cam activation maps for low resolution images. The main features highlighted are within the optic disk, especially in the region with veins. The optic cup in the normal case is small, which does not demonstrate signs of glaucoma presence. The ResNet 50 got more stable results throughout the different experiments made, reaching at least 0.75 of AUC with or without PCA preprocessing in high and low resolution retinal images. Now we have examples of VIT predictions with attention rollout activation maps in low resolution retinal images as well. The VIT model has shown great potential in detecting glaucoma in retinal images collected by mobile devices due to the process of pixel relation of the model. Domain transfer learning uses more similar datasets inserted in the same type of the problem, allowing the transfer of more related knowledge to another model for a better weight initialization. The PCA preprocessing technique shows more relevance in the low resolution dataset, where the models using this preprocessing method reached a high values of AUC. Thus, this technique can enhance feature visualization in the retinal image. The proposed methods in this study proved to be promising since the knowledge transfer of datasets related to the same domain can improve the model training. This can enable the detection of glaucoma in low resolution images collected by mobile phones. The emerging techniques of transformers and self-attention mechanisms in VIT models revealed to have promising performance, especially in the low-resolution retinal, retinal images. In this specific case for the mobile retinal images, the PCA preprocessing was important, enhancing feature visualization and improving the model results. The explainability models in the end highlighted correlated features to the corresponding class of the image. Future works may possibly verify if adaptations in VIT models could increase the effectiveness of glaucoma detection, especially in small datasets.